Welcome back for another tutorial on methods from Chapter 7 for the ICS 3U class at Hamilton District Christian High School. In today's tutorial, uh, today's program, we're looking at methods again. This is our last example. Today we're going to look at overloading a method. And overloading a method means that we can have two methods with the exact same name which is a bit weird and goes against everything that we've learned so far where we said everything needs to be unique and everything has to have its own name. If we look at these two methods that I have here public static void drawbar and down below I have another public static void drawbar. If we look at the difference the first one has two parameters that it's accepting int a length and string mark. The second one is accepting just an int length. Now you might be wondering why would we do this? Well, in method overloading we can have similar tasks being called and the program will actually know which one to call or which method to execute based on the argument being passed down and then the parameters being accepted by the method. In this first call statement we have drawbar 10 so it's going to call, or it's going to try to find the method called drawbar, which matches the parameter or the argument being sent down. And in this case, it's going to find the public static void drawbar that is accepting one parameter, and in this case, it's accepting the length. The next line, public static, sorry, the drawbar 5, comma, and then I just put a character in quotation marks, is going to look for the public static void drawbar that matches those arguments. So it's going to find the method has parameters that match the arguments here. So here we're passing down an integer and a string. It's going to try to find the public static void method that matches it. So if we run this, we look down here at our screen, it will actually display and execute the methods accordingly. So we're getting five asterisks because in the drawbar that has just one parameter we are specifying, or rather I am specifying, that it's going to print an asterisk as its character. It's going to accept the 10 and the 10 is just being used for how long the drawbar is going to be. Or how long the little bar that we're drawing is going to be. A little for loop is going to be 10. It's going to print out 10 of those the system.out.println is just to give myself a new space so that the two outputs don't go in the same line. The other one, which is the drawbar 5 with the percent sign in it, is going to look for the drawbar method that matches these arguments. It finds this one which has the same parameters, so we've got an int length and a string mark. So whatever is in the quotation marks, in this case the percent sign gets assigned to the variable mark and it's going to print that mark out. The length, which is the 5, it gets assigned to the int length variable and it's going to print that out. A little bit weird, a little bit abstract because up until now, as I said earlier, everything that we've had to do has had to have needed a unique name. No unique name necessary anymore because the program now makes sure that the parameters match the arguments of the method being called. This is the last tutorial for chapter 7 as we looked at method overload and method overloading. Um, hopefully we've discovered that methods are going to be a great way for us to really organize our code and also to give specific tasks to our code and to our methods. Uh, another great thing with methods is we can start to really clean up our main method and get rid of a lot of code out of there and start to break it down into subtasks. Hope you found these tutorials useful and well, the next one will be chapter 10 on arrays.